what your favorite Overwatch League team says about you. Time to potentially make some enemies. Let's go. Atlanta Rain. If you're a Rain fan, you're in one of two boats. One, it's your home team. I'm not exactly sure what it is with the rain, but I feel like a large percentage of their fan base is local. It's not always like that in the realm of esports, which is why I bring it up here. If you don't fall under this category, you probably came for the big name personalities and the trash talk as well. You came for Defran, but stayed for Dogman and Gator and all the others. Villains make the league more fun, so you're all for it. In fact, you love trash talk, you welcome it with open arms, and despite most of that being gone with today's team, you've been rewarded in other ways for your loyalty, and at this point, you're a Rain fan for life. Boston Uprising. If you support the Boston Uprising, you're probably in one of three categories. One, you just joined this year to support Bird Ring, Smurf, Twilight, and others. Two, you're an OG who fell in love with the Season 1 underdog and have been hooked ever since. Or three, it's your hometown slash local team. Residents of Mass and many northeastern states are all Boston. You've lived your whole life knowing Boston sports, and Overwatch ain't gonna be any different. Boston sports fans are among some of the most passionate out there. They're ride or die until the very end of time. The Uprising have that same them versus the world mentality as many other mass related sports teams that you tend to absolutely love, so the Boston Uprising are a natural fit. Chengdu Hunters. I mean, they're technically dead, at least for now, but no Nobody can deny that Chengdu had a good number of fans from both the East and the West. If you are slash were a fan of the Chengdu Hunters, you love chaotic energy. You're a sworn hater of goats and lover of Wrecking Ball and DPS. You resonate with the Hunters because they're never afraid to play the wackiest nonsense at the most random times, it always feels like they play what they want, and you love the fact that nobody else has dared to replicate what they have done throughout the last couple of years, and so many of their Chad-like players simply resonate with you on a spiritual level. Most people to ever support the Hunters likely started in 2019 the very beginning, when Among, Jinmu, and others took the world by storm with their anti-goats play and memes. If you like the Hunters, you're different. You don't really think of yourself as fitting in with the norm, both in real life and with sports teams. If you are slash were a Hunters fan, you simply want to be different. The Dallas Fuel if you like to burn blue, you've been watching the Overwatch League for a long time. Most Dallas fans that I've ever talked to at least picked them right from the inaugural season, and they've stayed loyal through all the ups and downs, even with every opportunity in the world to shut the door in their faces. If you like the Dallas Fuel, you've got some serious mental fortitude. Maybe you came for XQC, Envious, or even Siegel, but you stayed for the magic. There's a good chance that you're on the stubborn side, be it for your Overwatch takes, or just in general. You've been a confident fuel lover ever since the very first day. Every year is your year in your eyes, and you refuse to believe otherwise until it is proven to you. Sometimes you speak a little too loud for your own good, but most of y'all at least have some pretty big hearts. You'll stick with the fuel through just about anything, and that is admirable. And if none of this applies to you, you're definitely straight out of Texas. The Florida Mayhem. If you chose the Mayhem, I feel like you're from Florida. I'm convinced that like 75% of y'all actually live there. If not, you've got to be a memer. You love the McDonald's colors and the funny walkouts, and you came for the memes, but ended up staying for people like Logix, Saya Player, and everyone else after. And if neither of those things apply to you, you likely came and stayed for the new colors, branding, and Yaki. But one thing every Florida fan has in common is they stick with their team through everything. Through every choke, all the drama, and hard-fought victories, you love this team, and you don't give a damn what anybody else thinks. You're always willing to eventually forgive and forget for all of the bad moments. You always feel that your team doesn't get enough respect also, and you're kind of just sitting there, twiddling your thumbs, waiting for the day when you can finally rub it in the faces of all the doubters worldwide. Guangzhou Charge if you like the charge, my assumption is you like to be different, much like with your Chengdu brethren. You despite following trends in day-to-day -day life and the world of sports as well. You find it boring that everybody out there likes the same exact thing, the same exact five teams, the same narratives, the same players. All of it is very lame to you, so you tend to stick with the unpopular selections, if you will. Not many people pay attention to your boys, and, well... 
You prefer it that way. It's more enjoyable. It's only more glorious when they prove the doubters wrong and you get to rub it in all of their faces. Otherwise, you can just enjoy your team quietly without people interfering. If you're a charge fan, you're likely a fighter though. No matter how hard it is to have your voice be heard, you never give up. You always advocate for your team. It takes a lot of guts to support a lesser known team like this, and you wear that fact with pride. The Hungjo Spark. Why does it feel like so many fans chose this team because they're pink and the anime team? I mean, there's no shame in that, you do you, but I'm just saying. And if you happen to not fall under that label, you're likely big into Chinese Overwatch. You were, slash are, a massive fan of Leave, Gushui, and Shy. And in general, you know a lot better of China's skill than most and are convinced that they are madly underrated compared to other regions out there. And cause most people don't seem to care, you take that personally. You're not afraid to let the other APAC fans out there know that your boys clear those frauds every day of the week. The Spark and Chinese Overwatch alike deserves a lot more respect than what you think they're getting, and you're gonna make sure that people understand that. The Spark have one of the most interesting fan bases by far. The split between the casual I love them because they're pink in anime and the hardcore trash talking dedicated ones make them one of the most diverse fan bases in all of OWL. The Houston Outlaws. If you're an Outlaws supporter, you're a Texas native who hates all things Dallas. Or you're probably a major fan of the personalities that are or were once a part of this team. Jake. Team USA Overwatch and Dante are all things you resonate with deeply. That fiery determination to never give up as underdogs touches you to the very core. If you're an Outlaws fan, you feel a great bit of sentimental value and emotional attachment to your sports teams. And because of your deep love for the Outlaws, your fan base is quite easily one of the most cheerful and optimistic of all franchises. Even if it's just a small thing, it's always worth celebrating and getting excited for your boys. Some might consider it overconfidence or blind love, but you don't give a damn. The Outlaws make you happy, and that's really all you need. The LA Gladiators. If your favorite team is the Gladiators, and you're not from California, you probably don't like change. You're satisfied with getting the same thing day after day. It's what you know, but also what you enjoy. You're not the biggest fan of surprises. You prefer to have things be by the book, consistent, and reliable. You want a decent product from your Overwatch team that isn't considered bandwagoning, but still fun to watch. You're a fan because of the effort this franchise puts in, year in and year out, to build a competitive roster that's always worth watching. With LA Gladiators, you know what you're gonna get. And when you combine that with the emotional attachments of the early seasons, that's all you really need to forever rep the purple. The LA Valiant. If your team is the Valiant, there's a good chance that your name is Tezande. This guy doesn't seem to care how many times the Valiant change or what drama ends up following them. He has been confident they would win every single game for the last six years. That is some crazy commitment, and he deserves a shout out for truly being the GOAT. For the small handful of you that are right there with him, you either have got a really strong mental or you choose to support this team for the memes. You're always willing to forgive and forget because the Valiant is what you know and love. You've been through all of the pain and suffering, but you're too loyal to actually leave them even though you kind of want to. You've powered through all of the hardships that they've gone through already, you know it can't get any worse, and that kind of makes you one of the better fan bases in all of Overwatch for those of you who decided to stick around. London Spitfire. Not to make it a profiling thing, but if you've supported London past the year 2019, I'm assuming you're British or generally from the EU area. Being British is self-explanatory, but lots of EU Overwatch fans probably also feel attached to London, seeing as they're the only real sense of pride they have in real European representation across more than just one or two roles. They are truly an EU committed franchise in the league, and you take great pride in that. Thanks a lot, Paris. For the rest of you, you're probably a general fan of C9 Esports, a massive fan of the underdog story from last year, or you just love Hottie. And for a lot of you, the Spitfire are the one and only thing keeping you from leaving Owl for good. 
This team means absolutely everything to you, and you'll follow them to hell and back if it means watching them succeed someday. You're harder on your team than most would, but only because your passion and confidence shines brighter than just about any other fan base. The New York Excelsior. You most likely started watching the league four to five years ago. You mostly support this team because you just can't let go of the good old days. You still remember the legends of Jonek and Pine and Nisei and refuse to move on. You've gotten a taste of what success is like, and now there truly is no going back. You couldn't imagine supporting a different team. Or you're most likely part of the classic New York faithful in sports. For better or worse, you just can't get yourself to abandon your city, or your first love in the Overwatch League. No matter how far from grace they might fall as the years go by, your loyalty for them will always shine through. Some of you might have a bit too much faith, but it's commendable that you never give up, and it truly represents what it means to be a New York sports fan. San Francisco Shock If you're not from the Bay Area, or a person who came from the beginning, you likely support the Shock because you love watching the relevant teams. For some of you, it's the personalities. Think Super, or even Kaluj. But for the rest of y'all, your passion in Overwatch belongs to watching the premier talent. You enjoy watching guys pop off, and you know in a shock system that they always will. You prefer someone that's fun to watch, and honestly, I can't blame you. They're usually pretty awesome. And the shock have a habit of always making one of the best rosters on top of it, so you always know that you're going to have the consistency that makes for an all-time great sports franchise. It's been a couple of years since the last title happened, but at this point, there's no turning back for you. You're a shock fan for life. You've already witnessed two rings happen, so you can wait for another one. A lot of people find shock fans annoying or too noisy for their liking, but at the end of the day, it's only because they have so much passion for their team and they want to see them win, and they don't exactly find it fair that everybody hates on them. It's them versus the world, just like the uprising. The Soul Dynasty you're likely an OG Overwatch fan. Most Dynasty fans chose this team way back in 2018, or after Profit and Gesture joined. Not everybody falls into this boat, but most Dynasty fans happen to be old heads. For many of you, it started with the rise of Lunatic High, or the amount of cheers and how likable that 2018 Soul Team was. Or maybe you joined because of the GC Busan legends like Profit and Gesture, or perhaps they're the driving force that kept you around and didn't make you leave. The legends of the game from the early days of Overwatch hit closer to home than anything else for you. And through the Dynasty, that legacy forever lives on, no matter how much time goes by. And if you're a Dynasty fan, there's a good chance that you don't take kindly to anybody diminishing the hard work of some of your favorite guys. You'll defend them tooth and nail, but also be their biggest critic at the same time. Not because you're mad at them, but because you want to see them succeed. You love them to death, but you want to see them win because you know their potential. Dynasty fans are amongst some of the loudest fans out there, and no matter how bad things get, Soul fans always find a way to roar on. Soul Infernal Let's be honest, the Infernal name is too new to attract a lot of fans. If you're an Infernal supporter, you're everybody that's still left of the Fusion fanbase, plus some possible bandwagoners that abandoned like Chengdu or the Dynasty. If you like Soul Infernal, you've been with this franchise through most of the ups and downs. You loved Carpe. Alarm, EQO, Poco, Shadowburn, and others. You've gone through so much supporting all of these amazing players and are determined to see things through until the very end. If this team still hasn't broken you at this point with all those second place finishes, there's absolutely no going back for you. You're a Giga Chad who believes that this pain is only making you stronger. All the suffering that comes with being a fan will someday be worth it. Well, at least you hope. Shanghai Dragons. A good number of Dragons fans were here since the very beginning, and if that's you, it's safe to say that you're a very patient, sympathetic human being. When people laughed at you for going 0-40, when everyone wouldn't blame you for choosing a different team, you tuned out all of the noise. I mean, you watched through all 40 games, and you still didn't feel anything. If anything, you just wanted to see this team win even more, so at this point, you were willing to see things through until the very end. When they started to win someday, you wanted to say that you were one of the people who always believed. And if you're a Dragons fan, you always find the positives in situations. You're an optimist. You're willing to forgive and forget because you choose to see the potential in things. Dragons fans are some of the most wholesome, dedicated people out there, with a love of the game that is matched by very few. Toronto Defiant Okay, be honest with me, 
how many people like this team because they're Canadian, the branding, or the roster? It's gotta be most of you, right? I feel like you're either a Day One Defiant fan, or a refugee that's mostly here for certain personalities. For the loyal Defiant goers, Toronto have pretty much remained the cooler Canada team since 2020. Regardless of the results, they at least try to form a likable, competent roster, and are willing to spend more than most, which is something you appreciate as a Defiant fan. You've kind of accepted at this point that people are going to make fun of you due to all of the mid-jokes, amongst other things, but at this point, you're able to take it on the chin, no problem, as one of the most resilient fan bases in all of Overwatch. The Vancouver Titans. If you're a Titans fan, you just might be a runaway refugee. Some of you were so sad when that era died out, but decided to stay loyal because you really don't know where else to go. As for the rest of you, you're likely either a Canadian native who hates Toronto, or you simply love supporting Western talent. That seems to be a source of a lot of the Titans fans these days. They love the Western players that they sign and will always follow them and just want to see them succeed. For Titans fans, location and favorite players mean more than winning. All you want is to like an uncommon team with players that you adored and contenders. Expectations are never high for your franchise. You've already seen the worst. Disappointment is impossible. You've already reached the lowest point. So now at this point, good vibes are the main priority for you. All the glory is merely a bonus. You're just happy to be here, watching the players that you love. And for that, Vancouver fans are easily some of the chillest in the league. The Vegas Eternal. Okay, if you're a Vegas fan, you're probably doing it to be quirky or something. A good number of fans moved on way after relocating or after Element Mystic left even. At this point, you're trying to be that guy or girl who's built different. You know they've fallen off, but you can't be bothered, and it's mostly for the memes. And for the small percentage of you that are actually there for loyalty, there's probably too much of an emotional attachment at this point. You've seen so many rises and falls that you're basically attached for life now. Regardless of the reasoning, most of y'all really don't know where to go. You can't imagine which team to support, so you just stick here because why not? And for the moments where your team wins, you can troll because it would be hilarious, and for the moments you know they can't win, you can pull out your bag of memes instead. Winning at this point is basically irrelevant. You do your own thing, and you don't care much at all what anybody else thinks of you. And finally, the Washington Justice. If you're a Justice fan, there's a 50% chance that you like to take chances in life. You never know what you're gonna get, but the thrill of finding out is what keeps you going. It gets the blood pumping. With every year comes a brand new adventure. Be it good or bad, you're all in on the product. If you're a Justice fan, you get easily excited in life, even if it means having some unreasonable expectations. But deep down, you recognize that pain is sometimes necessary to move to a higher level. It's the thrill of the gamble, and it just so happens that a lot of you gamblers are very wholesome deep down. The Justice, that's kind of what they've been known for for the most part in their history outside of the Decay arc, raising and building up these incredible, wholesome stories with very positive players that you can't help but cheer for and want to see do well. As Cory and Stratus lovers, as ARK enthusiasts, and now Ben Besh Sims, you just love a good, wholesome story playing out. That's what ends up making the Justice Risk worth it to you. You roll the die on them because you know that this is the outcome you could possibly get, and that's what's going to make you the happiest. Nobody loves a good underdog story quite like the Justice Faithful. And there you go. Those are just a few of many things that can be said about you and your favorite Overwatch team. It would mean a lot to me if you could leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. And since these are far from the only team stereotypes, I'd love to hear what other ones I left out on down in the comments below. This has been ATP, and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.